Welcome to Talking Truth to Power, Nevada's Freedom Talk Radio. I am your host, Brendan Trainer. My co-host is Leland Fagri here every Wednesday. You can uh, we're streaming now on the uh, Facebook page, Talking Truth to Power, and all over the world at www.americamatters.us. Uh, well, it's kind of chilly here in Nevada. Boy, isn't it? Yes, it's put back on the socks day for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Summer's over. And yeah. I tell you, I, uh, I came down from 7,500 where it was in the teens, and in the Carson Valley it was mid-20s, mm-hmm. something like that. So right. Very chilly and windy. Mm-hmm. And windy, yes. Which is taking down power in California. Oh, yes. California can't even keep the lights on. <laughs> So they're probably not Burning listening up. to us today over across the line here, but uh, we hope that, I, what I saw yesterday, 36 counties are affected. Effect, yes. Some some power shortages in 36 individual counties now. It, what, it's just a mess. Mm-hmm. Everyone that I speak to these days from California are, are always requisitioned with this question. Do you have a plan to get out? Uh-huh. And they always laugh. And I wonder whether they're laughing at me today. Yeah. Because the visibility is uh, is going to be bad with all the smoke and everything. And I, I've been very surprised so far uh, as we were ratcheting up uh, into the fire season here that the basin itself, Tahoe Basin, has not been on the receiving end of a lot of that smoke, mm. which, you know, we usually are. Oh, okay. I mean, if you cough in California, we seem to see it in the basin up there, but uh, not so far. Mm-hmm. So you, the wind may be just perfect for the conditions. I don't really know. I, I've checked here and there, but not every day. But uh, as I came down to the basin today, there was quite a bit of smoke in the Carson Valley. Yes. And there's, um, fortunately, I didn't notice any up here in Reno. Did you? Uh, no, but yes, a little bit, a little mm-hmm. bit, not not too, ba- too badly. Uh, coming into the southern end of the city, there was, okay. I could see it, you know, at a distance. So. Well, our hearts go out to our friends in California yeah. who are listening to the show. and Hopefully uh, they can hear us. Yes. <laughs> so we have a lot to talk about. There's breaking news almost by the hour this week. There was? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Yeah, it's hard to find some time to sleep, isn't it? It's, yes. There's just so much going on, and uh, purposefully so. They, they just have to get rid of Trump at any cost. That's mm-hmm. what we're witnessing. Because they know they can't beat them electorally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even, uh, you know, the Hail Mary to Hillary or to um, the others uh, that they've been talking about, like uh, the m- former mayor of New York was named Blumenthal or... Bloomberg? Bloomberg, yeah. 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 That's not going to work. No, so. that's not going to work either. So, I mean, they're just, they're desperate. Um for a candidate that can beat Trump, and there isn't anyone, and they're just having to come to terms. Well, the it. one that possibly could, Tulsi Gabbard, is you know big polling at two percent because these Democrats are just too woke for her. Well, uh, to to the extent that everyone makes their decisions on foreign policy, yeah, you could vote for Tulsi. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't consider that when they vote, and mm-hmm. you know that's we've grown accustomed to the understanding that people now vote by what they think they can get out of government transfer right. pays, transfer payments. Yes. And, and, uh, <laughs> Free stuff. That's what's uh, so popular now on that side of the aisle. Only, I think only about 15% of Americans have passports. I let mine expire. Oh, I, did you? Yeah. I, I just can't see any reason to go anywhere else. Uh, at okay. this, I've seen enough of the world. I might want to go see... Uh, Alaska, but I can drive up. There. You can drive up here. <laughs> <laughs> so, the um, it's uh, I mean the week started out. The first thing I noted was about uh, General Flynn's uh, fighting back, and because he was ambushed and railroaded in his uh, you know conference, he got a lot of much different treatment than uh, the gentleman who who testified yesterday, right? Yes. And later on in the show, we're going to talk about the origin of the Manafort scandal, too, a little bit, if time permitting. We've touched on that in yes. the past. Yeah. And then uh, then we had uh, the idea that, you know, the, current, uh, the backlash against uh, our president's decision to pull the troops back. And then he said he was going to bring them out. Then he says they're guarding the oil, which is 
nobody can figure out what that's all about. But apparently, he listened to an ambassador, former ambassador named Jeffries, who is a neocon, who kept talking about guarding the oil. And Trump sometimes says that he, we ought to get the oil and all that. But we weren't invited into Syria. We have no bit legal business being in Syria. And just logistically, it doesn't make sense because you've got the uh, Kurds, they have to go 300 kilometers south to be in the oil fields. And then the oil fields there are full of Arabs, and the Kurds and the Arabs don't get along. So that's a recipe for conflict right there. If the Arabs get desperate enough, they could even reconstitute ISIS to fight the Kurds, and then that would justify us, apparently, putting more troops into Syria. This is what I uh, have an instinct about, and there was some someone else who shared some aspect of this the, uh, yesterday, and that is that he keeps his enemies guessing. Mm -hmm. And the reason for what happened, the reason we were able to find al-Baghdadi is that effectively he he just sort of raised the roof in the region. Everybody went in different directions. Everybody scattered. And when they scattered, they were able to follow assets that, that they thought they were aware of, and they traced him to this residence where they ultimately were able to kill him. Okay. And it was precisely because uh, sort of a, a setup on mm -hmm. Trump's part just to, if you know you, you have, um, you're infested mm -hmm. with some, some sort of a pest, you will uh, disrupt at some point. You'll have to upset that where they are, where they would scatter. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's done here is that he's just pulled up stakes, pulled the rug out from under the entire region. And when he did so, everybody had to scatter, and that's how they found al-Baghdadi. Well, that, that could very well be true. And uh, we'll talk more after the break. Join the Fun Time Theater this fall as we make the history of the Comstock come alive. With this is America, America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ. A Lotus Broadcast Station. The, the power of radio since 1967. Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775-237-2266. Now, back to the show. Hey, welcome back to Talking Truth to Power. This is Brendan Trainer, your host. Leland Fagri uh, is with me here today. And uh, we uh, had a, a shocking story about a, a married uh, or divorcing couple in Texas and the mother is a pediatrician, and she felt that her nine-year-old son was transitioning from male to female, and she wanted to start the transitioning process even though he's nine years old. Now, that would mean chemical castration, basically. It would <sighs> mean hormone shots, and the, the young kid never even experienced puberty. I uh, don't even want to talk about this subject, but uh, <laughs> it is revealing, I think, in a lot of ways. Yeah. So. How far it goes. Now, you know, I understand uh, that transsexuals are, exist, and they are, um, you know, a, a very tragic situation because it, they know that they will never be a woman, in fact, but they want to appear to be a woman, and uh, it... It can happen when you're in the womb, everybody starts out as a female. And then at a certain period of gestation, uh, you the hormones and the X, I think it's the X chromosome, chromosomes, yeah, yeah. reveal themselves to the, to the fetus, and they become a boy. But sometimes that gets messed up. And this is completely a, a physical abnormality. Some people called hermaphrodites are actually born with both sex organs. But many people are born uh, where they're physically one person, or not many. You know, it's about maybe 2 3% of the population at most. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, yeah, yeah. It's not that many. No, it's a very small portion. Yeah, but they become uh, fetishized into this uh, by the left, 
uh, in their uh, cultural Marxism, their you know attempt to destroy the family, they're being made uh, into uh, heroes or almost like saints or or and uh, so and you know it's one thing to understand the plight of transsexuals and to try to um, live with them and 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 help them when we can, but it's another thing to start taking prepubescent children into the transfer process before they've even had a chance to, to make experience. decisions for themselves. Yes, exactly. Uh, it's just the ugliest thing I could possibly <laughs> come up with. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's in the morning and you, you know, we were talking about the uh, the who song, I'm, I'm a boy. Uh -huh. We should, you know, that mother should be forced to listen to that song. You over have that and over in there, again. Christian? You have that I'm a boy from the who? You could Push, push that in, <laughs> into the dialogue. I don't at the moment, but I could certainly pull yeah. it up for yeah. you. <laughs> You're free to do so. Uh, and um, this this poor kid has been a ping pong. And at first, the judge ruled that the mother, I guess, because she was a pediatrician. Yeah. And she's, you know, but and so they know these kinds of things. Yeah, they they're experts. Mm -hmm. How many experts do we have to put up with these I days? Know, it's just... And uh, you know, I've also heard of things like. Uh, from the woman to man perspective, that uh, young le uh, women that uh, are lesbians, are, but they they don't realize they're lesbians initially, and they start going through the transition process, and they have mastectomies, uh, complete mastectomies, because they believe they're a boy, and then s after they're 18 or 19 or 20, they they suddenly realize, hey, I'm not a transsexual, I'm a lesbian. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> exactly. And this, uh, you know, this is, um, and the reason why it's so bad is because, not just because of what's happening to the children, but noted, uh, you, you know, uh, experts that don't agree with this are often persecuted and their careers ruined and they're kicked out of their positions or their, or their practice is, is destroyed because of pressure from the woke left. And it's you know, and our tax dollars in many cases are yes. used mm -hmm. to perform these transgender uh, processing yes. events that yes. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about, but <laughs> but they certainly do exist, and, yeah. and we're paying for it. Yes, and don't forget those who are in prison if they want to go through that change, uh, we're paying for right. that as well. That's yes. exactly right. That came to light recently. So, and you know, I I am not one that says that, you know. Uh, that if we allow transgenders to use the uh, women's restroom, that it, it's going to be hairy, you know, men with pot bellies, like you see the the right often talk about, that are just using it as an excuse to uh, to molest women. No, but that would be reason enough. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, that's that's really not the case. There's been few, if any, incidents. Not that I'm aware of. of that. Yeah, yeah. There, I mean, there can't been, there aren't that many of them. Yeah, and there haven't been that many instances of that happening and um you know some transsexuals can easily pass for women you know they except if you look closely at the wrists or, or try to find the adam apple you wouldn't know the difference they they do look like women and if you say so yeah that's true i okay. mean you go to uh, i mean lady boys are you know a part of our existence here on this planet and uh but the um the idea that uh, you know that anybody, any parent can take their child and put them through this, and on the other hand, in Nevada, I spoke out against it, and the Libertarian Party came down on me for doing it. But the idea that parents could put their children through non-coercive, non-physical conversion therapy if they're having uh, doubts about their sexual identity. And that's outlawed now in Nevada and, uh, and some other states. I'm not talking about electroshock therapy or, or some other kind of uh, uh, drug or, or uh, treatment where coercion, physical coercion is used. I'm just talking about sitting down and talking with a psychologist to try and talk through your uh, confusion. It's, it's outlawed in America because it's conversion theory. But on the other hand, if a woman, if somebody, if a parent insists that their child, uh, you know, is, is of the other gender, uh, who, who is that? Oh, that intelligent, very intelligent actress, Charlize Theron. She is bringing up her child as a trans, uh, transitioning child. Is she? Yeah. 
And uh, it's well, just amazing. You we'll have need to, to check on that story in a, <laughs> yeah. about 10 years, see what happens there. Yeah, exactly. But I think the core issue here in this case that you cited when we began this segment is about the, the father's role. Right. And apparently he was being denied the opportunity to weigh in on the subject. Right. And that's why it ended up in the courts. Right. And, and finally, he got a, a common-sense judge, I mean, especially after the news coverage about it, who reversed that other decision and said that any, anything to do with the young boy had to be uh, the, both parents. But, you know, it, it's, once again, it's uh, like the uh, religious columnist Rod Dreher said, it's, it's the law of merited impossibility which is what the woke are saying that, you know, basically what they're saying is it's absolutely it's ridiculous. Ideal. It's absolutely ridiculous that any harm would come to you uh, for opposing uh, our gender rights. Huh. And what it does, you'll totally deserve it, you bigot. They look at it as an ideal almost, you know, yeah. they almost celebrate, you know. Yeah, that's it. It's not just something that we understand and work with. It's, it's the ideal to be accepted now, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, Oh, here we go. <laughs> nice job, Kristen. <laughs> and I'm a boy. <laughs> it's Roger Daltrey. <laughs> You know, I uh, saw The Who at uh, the Outdoor Amphitheater in uh, on the south shore of Tahoe just two years ago. I mean, my mouth is still open from that event. Oh. oh it was an amazing event. Was it? Yeah. Oh, boy. Really a bucket list event for me. <laughs> yeah, fantastic group. And... Uh, and a very prescient song because that was written many years oh, ago. Oh, yeah, that was very early on in their career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, we uh, we have to resist. The resistance <laughs> has to go both ways. On, you know? on, on most subjects, as it turns out, these yes. days, because they they've permeated the culture and they want to control us with it. Yes. So get your kids out of those public schools. The first thing you do, figure right. out a way to get your kids out of public schools. And maybe before that, out of California. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this incident happened in Texas. Oh, I know. Places. I know. But you see, it's, it's sort of a, um, a breeding ground for all of these social experiments, you know, that Marx, Karl Marx talked about in, in his manifesto. Well, I, I don't know if Karl Marx talked about it. Yeah, no, it. he this talked about it in the Communist Manifesto, what, what that, he was, that they were experimenting with our children in public schools. Oh, Oh, well, that he was their advocated pur public education. That was their purpose, sure. and, he, and, he, and he said, if, if, if you accuse us of doing this, we plead guilty. Mm -hmm. So he admitted it, that that's what they were up to with public schools. Yeah, but the... Uh, oh, look at the phones light up. <laughs> 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 What's the number? 844-790-TALK. We'd love to have some public school uh, uh, reaction to that statement, but uh -huh. uh, I'm sure they're doing other things. Yeah, but it... it the current situation is more the Frankfurt School, the cultural Marxist, uh, you know, movement uh, that um, has uh, attempted to attack the family at its core. And I am not opposed to, you know, there was the, the polyamorous uh, congresswoman who was in the news uh, because of our thruple. Mm -hmm. And I'm not opposed to that in a limited extent because I, I really believe that most people are, at, at least 85, 90% of people are basically heterosexual. They still want a family. They don't want to do any of this. Uh, but well, the issue there for me was, I mean, is it, st is it illegal that you can't have an attraction for a staffer? Isn't that basically what it well, was all about? Yeah, that, 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 that is considered unethical. Yeah, well, Not I, illegal, but I, unethical. I think they've, they've got much more important things to be uh -huh. preoccupied with at this point, don't you? Right. But she's gone. Yep, she's, she's resigning. Resigned. We'll be back. Hello, I'm Omer Raines, author of the international best-selling book, Back to the Summit, How One Man Defied Death and Paralysis to Again Need... This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ. A Lotus Broadcast Station. The power of radio since 1967.
Want to expand your advertising dollar? Sponsor this or any America Matters program by calling 775-827-8900, extension 2. Now, back to the show. My co-host is Leland Fagri, and uh, the uh, impeachment process that we're witnessing now is very much about what President Trump said when he was being elected, that he actually wanted to be friends with Russia. He sometimes mentioned that he thought that Crimea was a fiat accompli and we shouldn't be sweating it so much. And uh, this infuriated the Democrats and the, U and the people of the Ukraine who were totally in on Hillary Clinton. But I've got something here of, uh, that is from an article uh, about a uh, Ukrainian politician on the opposite side, on y y uh, the party of regions, Yanukovych's party. The one the, He's the man who was deposed in the Maidan coup that Obama pulled in February of 2014. And uh, what if the whistleblower's source, now we know there's a whistleblower, but the whistleblower didn't have firsthand knowledge. No. And everybody's assuming that the person that had first-hand knowledge was in Washington, D.C. Somewhere close by. Yes. But what the, if the person that had first-hand knowledge and pulled the, uh, told the whistleblower to, to write his complaint was in the Ukraine was itself? On the, was on the receiving end yeah, of the, the call. Yeah, the receiving end of the call. Yeah. And that he had a definite reason to be afraid of what would was about to happen. Yeah, about to happen. So uh, he, this would be someone who is perhaps a CIA asset, a fr or who isn't these days, <laughs> <laughs> a friend of Soros, <laughs> <laughs> a man who might even be wanted by the Department of Justice already. Well, according to Alex, uh, the uh, person that uh, is... Uh, Tur is Turis, uh, uh, something with a T, isn't it? Zarev. T-S-A-R. Oleg, Oleg Zarev. Yeah, T-S-A-R-O-V yes. or something. Yeah. He was a member of parliament in the Ukraine for four terms. He was a candidate for the presidency. He's now in Crimea in exile because of threats against his life. Because <laughs> that's where you go. <laughs> yeah. You go to the Crimean uh, area for uh, protection. Yeah. So um, he, uh, he says that there is a name attached to the whistleblower source, and the name is Alexander Daniluk who was the finance minister of Ukraine from 2016 to 2018. Well, he would have he would know where the bones are buried. Oh, sure. And in fact, he, he likely profited mm -hmm. from uh, directly from Biden. Sure. So, uh, this person says that um, Biden and Curry, but especially Biden, he calls him the US proconsul for the Ukraine. Proconsul. Yes. <laughs> And um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, he uh, was the he profited immensely. We don't even know how much Biden profited. There from. has to be a whole lot of money going on there. Yes, at least three billion, at mm -hmm. least three billion in U.S. AID aid, and uh, this aid was uh, signed. It was Biden uh, got the aid, and he used it. Uh, to gather influence with the Ukrainian politicians, but the aid, and this isn't the only country. I mean, the U.S. aid is notorious for being ripped off oh, by absolutely. the governments that it goes Used to. Used for their own purposes. That's yes. why we shouldn't get, send it out there. Yes. And this whole impeachment thing is, you know, something that the American people are really concerned about, and that's that our foreign aid checks are... Are, are check, being held up. They <laughs> are held up, or they don't go out in time. <laughs> Americans are very Where, concerned about Where's that. our KCKQ man on the street uh, <laughs> finding out uh, what Reno uh, residents <laughs> think, think about, about that. that? Yes. So... <laughs> so um, 
And again, it's all about the oil and the gas and other resources, as we'll mention later on. So um, Hunter Biden was put on the board because uh, we talked about the uh, primary, the Mikola Zlovchewski, who at least until we dig into all the holding companies involved and everything else, is considered to be the uh, president or owner of Burisma Oil. So Ukraine itself has uh, modest reserves of natural gas, which was cheap to produce. And while the uh, Yanukovych was in office, uh, Burisma made money while the people of Ukraine had very cheap, even free gas for cooking and heating, mm. kind of like Libya yeah. in a way. <laughs> And then after the Maidan uprising in February 2014, in which uh, Yanukovych was driven from office, the International Monetary Fund, now there's a name that everybody should be familiar with. Mm -hmm. And you know who the president of the International Monetary Fund is? That is uh, the former... Um head of the European Central Bank, is it not? No, uh, you got that opposite. I think you're thinking of Christine Lagarde. Yeah, there you go, Lagarde. Yeah, she was the head of the IMF in Europe, and she is actually a convicted felon for yeah. being involved in kickback schemes mm -hmm. to the former French President Sarkozy. Which, uh, interestingly, went away. Yes. Uh, all now this, she's the president of the European Central yeah, Bank. All that scandal <laughs> and criminality is suddenly not part of the discussion. Yes. But... Um, the IMF demanded that Ukraine raise their gas prices. So the people of Ukraine no longer had cheap uh, oil for basic cooking and heating. And so um, and to top it off, President Poroshenko then demanded an additional cut for himself because he approved the gas hike. Shocking. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, again, Jelakevsky, the uh, head of Burisma, he... Uh, countered by hiring these high-profile board members, including Hunter Biden, as a buffer to induce Poroshenko to back off his blackmail demands. And then, uh, however, this is illegal under Ukrainian tax law. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to repeat that for yes. our listeners. <laughs> the appointment of Hunter Biden and uh, John Kerry's nephew and uh, the uh, pr former president of Poland and all these uh, figureheads to the Ukrainian board are illegal under Ukrainian tax law. So he Hard spurred the Prosecutor General Shokin to investigate starting in 2015. And then in February, now of course the whole trope about Biden is that uh, Shokin wasn't doing enough to fight corruption, right. so Biden had to go in on his white horse and right. force yeah. them put, to put somebody else yeah, in. Yeah, who believes that nonsense anyway? <laughs> no. I just... But actually there are... Uh, documentation there are stories uh, press stories from the ukraine and court records that show on february 2nd uh, the uh, of last year wasn't it yes of uh, no i think it was uh, right after trump took office i believe 2016 i, I heard it was 17 but yeah i could be wrong. yeah shokin seized uh, major assets of zlokevsky houses a rolls royce and other assets and so it's simply not true. It's an outright lie that Biden uh, was, uh, that Zlokeski was not prosecuting uh, corruption. And so if, if that happened on February 2nd, by February 22nd, Biden was on the line. Mm -hmm. one, one source says Biden sprang into action. Sprang. <laughs> Making constant calls to Poroshenko to get rid of Shlokin. So it was uh, the opposite of how it was How explained. it's portrayed, yes. Yeah. And and that's what uh, we're not getting in no anywhere in the Everybody, media. Everybody's uh, saying, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. Right, right. Yeah, you know this, and and I, we can get into uh, who started the conspiracy theory as well. The conspiracy theory idea that so so uh, Shokin had at least two open cases against Hunter, Hunter Biden, and then after Biden made the first set of calls, Shokin went on vacation. And Biden was incorrectly told by Poroshenko that Shokin had been fired. Then when he returned from vacation and he was still there, a, fu a furious Biden lit up the phone lines with Poroshenko again. And that's when he was at the CFR. Um, well, I think he just condensed the whole timeline. I think, you know, like he does, he gets... He mm -hmm. just condenses things and makes it into a... Simplifies I don't think there was it. an actual six hours. There might have been, but... Mm -hmm. But that's when he made his statement, approximately. Yeah, yeah that's uh, sometime after that. Yeah. Son of a bee. He guys fired. 
<laughs> so um, it's got to feel good, huh? So after lighting up the phone lines with Poroshenko again, Poroshenko did fire Shulkin, and his successor said that he would get be the one to prosecute. And he made a big uh, noise about it, and uh, ten months later, he quietly closed the cases, mm -hmm. and nobody because they've know, been closed. Yeah, yeah is in the wiser. Now, what else do we know that Biden has his uh, fingers in? Well, uh, there's a fact of uh, three billion dollars in U.S. aid. Uh, Biden threatened to withhold one billion of it, and uh, plus there was another couple of Biden uh, billion that came in. And as often happened, as I said, these um, payments were very irregular. There is the usual paper trail around these uh, payments are seriously lacking. Like usually you have to certify everything when the government gives you aid. You have to claim you're not corrupt and everything. Very little paperwork. No certification. No certification around these. In fact, one of them was signed by someone who called himself the acting president of Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. No wonder the Clintons went in there and just took that yes. thing over. So Daniluk was the Minister of Finance in Ukraine from 2016 to 18, and he definitely helped himself to some of this money. And yeah. we'll be back after the break. It's your worldwide invite to Charbecue, the Butcher's Kitchen. Perfection Tri-Tip. This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ. A Lotus Broadcast Station. The power of radio since 1967. Unable to listen to the whole show? A recording of today's program will be available later today. Visit americamatters.us and click on the podcast link. Now, back to the show. Hey, welcome back to Talking Truth to Power. I'm your host, Brendan Trainer, and my co-host, Leland Fagri. So we're trying to give some background here up to what's going on with this impeachment. Because if even half of this information gets revealed in, uh, in the coming uh, days and weeks, uh, that could take down the entire DNC. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> because they're involved up to their necks. And uh, CrowdStrike, uh, which is, uh, I think, code for his conversation in the Zelensky phone call. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what uh, triggered the left, is if uh -huh. they, we get into that server... That's where all the uh, uh -huh. answers can be found. Yeah. Well, let's hope. But anyway, um, so this Alexander uh, Daniluk uh, was um, supposed to come over to America with President Zelensky when President Zelensky visited uh, Donald Trump, President Trump. Uh, but he was informed he could be arrested if he came down yeah. to American soil. Yeah. And it seems that uh, Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani... <laughs> And uh, his Italian associate, uh, an attorney named Sam Kislin, who is an octogenarian. The guy is 85 wow. years old. Wow. And uh, they, had, uh, they had some dirt on, on Mr. Uh, Daniluk. And uh, it apparently has to do with these uh, uh, USAID payments and how they got enriched with that, among other things. So uh, I know Kislin tried to go back to Kiev, I think, last year, and he was detained at the airport and sent back to Italy. He wasn't allowed to enter the country. Mm. So we are hearing that Italy is, uh, the Italian investigation is connected to Mifsud, the uh, professor who approached uh, George Papadopoulos, but it, it also is very likely connected to um, Giuliani and uh, Daniluk and the payments. And I we I can only hope that this comes to light and it doesn't because the Republicans have got to get their act together and they have got to back the president's attempt to, to reconcile uh, somewhat with Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they open up this can of worms, they could destroy the DNC, but they could also the neocons in the Republican Party would be exposed. Well, the, it appears as though the Durham investigation really took off exponentially mm -hmm. with the connection into Rome. 
mm -hmm. by all accounts. I mean, that uh, investigation is now quadrupled, apparently, and everybody's sweating at the, th the idea, you know, the, the threat that it could yield real significant results against the conspiracy against Trump. So uh, President Zelensky did investigate Daniluk, and Daniluk has been fired from his finance ministry post, at least. So that's a that's an encouraging sign. But the Ukraine is just a cesspool. What what the Democrats did to the Ukraine is very very similar to what they did to Russia in the 1990s before Putin came in and cleaned up house mm -hmm. uh, under Yeltsin, and they have just been robbing uh, the people and the, and the country blind. It's really a shame. Uh, and remember, we talked about the Chalupa sisters. We did. Where Chiquita Banana, well. It, <laughs> it created its own image for us. Yes. Didn't it? <laughs> Alexandra Chalupa, in, th in this time period, was being paid at least $400,000 by the Democratic National Committee to dig up dirt in, in, uh, in the Ukraine. And they're the ones that uh, framed poor, uh, Paul Manafort. Supposedly, they found a handwritten ledger in a burned-out headquarters of Yanukovych's party, the Party of Regions. And uh, it's never really been verified, but the fact that they announced it and found it was enough to get Manafort fired from his uh, position with the Trump campaign. Now, was that the same information that the Justice Department passed on back in 2008? I'm not sure. We don't have that string uh, tied together Be yet. Because we know that they passed on some information that had come to their attention at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So that was Bush and, and Barack Hussein Obama. Yes. So anyway, the, the, this uh, supposed ledger, which I understand is... A handwritten chicken scratch and Cyrillic and hard to put together and completely unverified that um, is uh, accused of Manafort of receiving two million dollars in payments uh, from the party of regions and there are other Democrats over there uh, making uh, money and uh, you know as we mentioned before uh, after the Maidan we tried to steal the Crimean oil and then after Crimea voted to rejoin Russia, they canceled those contracts. They were talking about fracking the Donbass, which is Sorry? part of the reason why, fracking. Oh, fracking the Donbass, oh, okay. which is part of the reason uh, why those two uh, uh, provinces or oblasts uh, revolted against um, the Ukrainian government after the. Uh, so they need to. The Ukraine used to get their gas directly from Russia and. They got a good price, although they were so corrupt that sometimes they didn't even pay Russia, and they ran up a lot of debts, but that's another story. But anyway, after the Maidan, the Ukraine decided that they would send the gas to Poland and other countries and then buy it back from them. So this obviously caused the price to go up for the people of, of the Ukraine while making work, uh, j make work jobs for the elite and, and profits from being unnecessary middlemen. So, and getting back to how this could be a conspiracy theory, the roots of the idea that Biden was completely innocent and this is all a conspiracy theory uh, starts with, uh, well, it, in the U.S., it starts with BuzzField and guess who? NBC News. Well, and then it was John McCain as well because yes. he, was, he, he got a, an advanced copy of, yes. of the Steele dossier. Yeah. But it also comes from a, another one of these strange organizations called the Organized Crime and Corruption Registry Project, a British front. And this, <laughs> you MI, can't, yeah, MI it's, it's completely Orwellian. I mean, <laughs> yeah. once they call something the Organized Crime and Corruption yeah. Registry, you know they're just promoting uh, organized crime and corruption. Some guy on a desk in Langley came up with that. <laughs> so it, it's associated basically with MI6 and the Institute of Statecraft in England and Britain which also funds the Integrity Institute, which we've talked about. The Integrity Institute pays you EU journalists to write full stories implicating Russia and everything from global warning to Catalonia to Les Gilets Jaunes and everything in between. Uh, Taxpayer-funded uh, media, basically, is yes. what the BBC is as well. Exactly. So um, th this uh, group, the Institute for Statecraft and the Organized Crime and Corruption Registry Project is funded by the usual <laughs> suspects, the U.S. Foreign Office, the U.S. State Department, U.S. AID, there's a conflict right there, 
the OMEDR network, uh, we haven't talked about that much, but the Soros Open Society, the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, all the usual suspects have their fingers in this pie as well. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. The Atlantic Council. Yes. Now, I also found out some somewhat unrelated but very telling about the corruption of there. Remember the former CI head James Woolsey? Sure. He once uh, admitted on, uh, Laura Ingraham once wondered if the U.S. interferes in elections, and he said, only for their good. Only yeah, for oh, their own. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. He sits on the board of Velta, the titanium mining company. So he's got a position over there making money uh, off the, of Ukraine. The, uh, the country is just infested with deep state actors. Democrats and spooks for the most part. Yeah. You know? And then we found out, uh, according to our whistleblower, we found out that... We have a whistleblower? Yes. This uh, politician <laughs> here that we're talking about. But... There's a, we wondered, we heard that the Medan uprising, that the people, a hundred people were killed in that uprising, and we heard that they, uh, we had Jordan mercenaries, Georgia, meaning the country, not the state. I think that was about the number that was yeah. banded about at the time. Yeah. Uh, Georgian mercenaries came forward and said they were the ones that were paid to shoot people from the Maidan Hotel. It was rooftops. Yeah. Well, n even the rooms. It was very much like the Mandalay Bay, Las mm -hmm. Vegas shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, there were sitting ducks down there. That's oh sure. yeah. It's, I I stayed there when I was. I in can Vienna. still picture it. Yeah, yeah. It's right across from the uh, Maidan where the people uh, meet. Uh, it's like the meeting place for Ukrainians whenever something is uh, happening there. And so his name is Adrius Buktevichius. Easy and for you to say. Yeah, easy for me to say. <laughs> but he's also an MI6 asset, a member of the Institute of State Crass, oversees the Integrity Institute, and, you know, so on and so forth. The whole Chatham House League. Yeah. And worse than that, he is um, also not only linked to the Maidan shooting, but he's linked to the... Uh, uh, a Lithuanian uprising where shots were fired to the 2003 Georgian uprising where shots were fired and people were killed. So he is an operative. He's not... Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, he's, he's a, an activist. He's a, long, a long time operative. Mm -hmm. When he... Uh, he uh, was also Minister of Defense in Ukraine and there was a series of mysterious fires in ammunition dumps <laughs> <laughs> After the fires were over, the Ukrainians investigated, and they found out that 80% of the supposed ammo was not even there. This so, was after the plane came down? Was that... Uh, um, no, no. This is uh, just totally separate. Oh, okay. Uh, he was Minister of Defense, and there were uh, major fires in Ukrainian ammunition dumps, and it turned out that 80% of the ammo wasn't there. That <laughs> So it was all paper, mm -hmm. you know, transactions. Mm -hmm. So he must have made a lot of money off of that. So, you know, this is, is uh, the, the roots of uh, the American empire are, are just, and we, we don't get any information on the mainstream media about any of this until, of course, they go after uh, the president and then this impeachment. But, of course, they have to impeach. Like you said, they're caged animals. Yeah. This could bring down the DNC. It could just wreck the Democratic Party if well, the truth ever came out. You mean the Clintons? The Clintonistas, yeah. yes. Because you remember what uh, Jim McDougal, the Whitewater uh, uh, friend of the Clintons said about the Clintons? He said they, uh, they're like a tornado. They come into town, destroy everything, and then move on. <laughs>